Profit is not a dirty word, so get over it. If you're going to be an inventor, you are going to face the fact that profit is one of the important parts, if not the most important part, of being an inventor. I know, I know, I said a dirty word, profit, everybody thinks that's a bad thing, but let me get into the details and explain it to you a little bit better why profit is so uh, important. Making a profit separates the professional from the makers and the other amateurs out there. It basically separates the children from the grown-ups. Profit is an important part of being in business. So let's talk about money for a moment. Let's say you have an idea and it's a really good idea. Let's give you the benefit of the doubt and say it's something that could sell and could make money. Well, the fact is, is you're going to need investors. You're either going to have to invest in yourself, you're going to have to go to friends and family, a bank, maybe angel investors. It depends on how big your idea is and what you're willing to do to see that idea through. Well, there's only one thing that investors are going to want to hear, and that's what's in it for them. And there's only one thing they're really interested in, and that's a profit. If you're going to take money from people, they're going to want to know that they're going to be paid back and that they're going to get something in return for their investment and the risk that they're taking in you. Um, so make sure when you talk to your potential investors, even if it's your family, that you're always talking about your business plan and your profit motive for your invention idea. This is really important. It's not a bad thing. It's not a dirty word. It's a reality of life, and it's a reality of being a professional inventor. <laughs> Many are going to say, oh, profit is greedy. It's a bad word. I don't believe in it. It's about community. It's about all these other things, blah, blah, blah. It's not about any of that. Let me tell you a little more about the maker community and what happens as things progress with your invention and idea. I've been doing this for years and it's time that you start thinking about how to really raise money and sell your idea to the world. <laughs> telling people that you have a community of friends that are willing to buy your product, telling them how you're going to change the world or make it a better place is not going to convince investors to give you money. What they want to know is what's in it for them. <laughs> Let's see how far you can get when you try to raise funds from, from a bank or from an investor by all these sharing just happy thoughts. We need to start talking about a profitable business model. How are you going to make a profit? And don't even think that profit means how much money you're going to put in your pocket. When I talk about profit, I'm talking about how much the product costs to build, how much it costs to manufacture, how much it costs to ship, the infrastructure, the employees, and all those things that are added to the cost of making the product and, and for what you sell the product for on the open market. That profit itself is the first step in profit. Then maybe someday we can begin to talk about the profit that you make as the inventor. That's a long road ahead. Unless you have the amazing ability to convince others to just give you money, for the rest of us, we have to start thinking about profit and how we are going to turn this into a real business model. I know you guys are thinking right about now that I am wrong and that places like Kickstarter and the crowdfunding community have changed things. It's not true. The crowdfunding community is just like any other business or customer. And let me explain to you why. It's all about the money. It's about the money for Kickstarter and the fees that they charge. It's about the community of backers and the fact that they're putting up their hard-earned money to support you. Once they give you money, they expect something in return. So you better have a profit model built into your invention or your pledges or whatever else you're offering on Indiegogo, Kickstarter, or other crowdfunding sites. Because if you do not, you're going to wind up taking money from these people and you won't be able to fulfill your rewards. So again, it's important to start thinking about profit. It's not a dirty word. Oh, yes, it is, as you're going to say. It's a dirty word. Let me know. Let me explain it to you another way. What's, who's the bad person in a scenario where a guy invents a product 
an ads profit model to it. Let's say it costs him $100 to make his, his reward. He then goes and sells it for 250 on Kickstarter and gets a few hundred backers. He figured out the real cost was $100. He factored in all his overhead, his shipping costs, packaging, all the other things that come, come with inventing an idea, uh, product. He factored that in and he's making a profit of two and a half times on a $100 cost. Then we have another guy who creates you know, a Kickstarter campaign or an Indiegogo campaign and he sells his product for $100, the very $100 it cost him to build it. Now he's faced with the fact that he's blown through all his money and he can't afford to ship the rewards. Who is the dishonest person? Who is the greedy person in this case? The guy who actually lived up to his promises or the guy who didn't make a profit and didn't fulfill the back of rewards and took all that money from people? Again, this is why I say profit is an important part of being an inventor. Profit is not a dirty word, so get over it. <laughs> Going back to this idea that every investor wants to know what's in it for them. It's not about the community. It's not about what makes people feel good. Yes, they want to know what positive things it, the product is going to do, how it's going to change the world. All that stuff is good for the image of the product. But in the end, investors are selfish. And so are most crowdfunding backers. They all want to know what they are getting for putting up their money. If an investor, he wants to get at least his money back, but more importantly, he wants to see a return for his investment. Backers, yes, they, be, they enjoy being part of, you know, watching you grow and create a new product or business. But in the end, they do want a product for the money they give you. They don't want to hear feel-good ideas. They don't want to hear that you couldn't fulfill the rewards. Trust me, they will get angry. They will turn on you if you don't fulfill those rewards. So you need to make sure that you live up to your promises, both to your investors, the people in the community, your family and friends, or whoever else, even yourself. If you're putting your own money in, you want to make sure that you get your investment back. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with seeking a profit. So as an inventor, what do we price our products at? How do we calculate those costs? What I normally do is very simple. I calculate how much it costs to build an individual product and then figure out what the cost is to build 100. It's a good way to start. So take 100 pieces, calculate all the costs involved to turn those 100 pieces into a reality don't forget to include shipping, packaging, and all the other costs that may be associated with it, including infrastructure, buildings, employees, whatever you need. I then usually multiply that number by two and a half times. And I know some people are going, oh my gosh, two and a half times. Trust me, if this is the first time you are inventing, you will find that two and a half times is the actual cost to turn your invention into a reality. It is not greedy. It is not overcalculating. You will barely make any money. And if more than likely, you're going to have to put, still put some of your own money into the product. Most of the products I have invented have cost me money to get off the ground, even the ones that have been successfully funded on Kickstarter. But the life after the Kickstarter project is what's important to me. It's what led me to this show and teaching you guys how you can turn your inventions into reality. It's because I have learned all these things along the way. It doesn't change. I've talked to plenty of people on Kickstarter and Indiegogo, and I've heard the same stories over and over again. In fact, I'll tell you a little story a few years ago. Right in the beginning of Kickstarter, there was a group of college students that invented a lamp. It was a beautifully designed, they were design students from one of the colleges here in California. It was a beautifully designed lamp. It was all made of metal, sat on your desk, it was very pretty. They sold it, I don't remember the exact price, but I wanna say it was a few hundred dollars because it was metal and it was expensive to begin with. And I was talking to the three founders of this Kickstarter project, and they explained to me that they made a huge mistake when they set up the rewards for this lamp. They forgot to anticipate the weight the, that the unit cost to ship, and they didn't calculate that into their price. 
And if I remember correctly, they told me that they each of the three people were going to have to put about $10,000 of their own money, college students, to make sure that they could finish the shipping of all these lamps that they had created. Now, I felt bad for them for doing this, but this is a simple lesson to learn that these are the important steps recalculated three, four, five times until you're sure that that number is correct. Go over the number, look at different scenarios, come up with a number that you're comfortable with that you know will cover all the costs involved to ship those rewards. It's the most important part of being an inventor. And again, I've said it a million times in this episode, it is important to have a profit model built into each and every one of your inventions. If you like this episode and learned something, I hope you will subscribe to our Invention Therapy channel. 